Subscribe and keep watching for a special offer coming soon from Olight. UtahGunExchange.com, the nation's patriot marketplace. Buy, sell, trade. Stay tuned until the end of this video to see Blade HQ cut all the things. Shot Show 2018 with CRKT, meeting with Joel again. Nice to see you, man. All right, great to see you too, Shane, and thanks uh, to the Lake Boy Scout Channel for coming by and uh, taking a look at our new wares for the year. This is Shot Show 2018, and we're really excited to show you some great knives. We got some goodies. Yeah, this first one is a Caligo um, from TJ Schwartz, and it's got a black anodized aluminum handle with a blue pivot ring. It's got a black oxide finish on the blade. It's 8CR14 MOV steel, which is a really solid everyday steel. Yep. Comparable to an AUS8 or so. Yep. And then you've got um, the price is like $49.99. It's an excellent price for such a distinctive looking knife. Now, TJ Schwartz is from Boise, Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, he's been just, just starting to design knives and he really has a fun uh, credo. And that is the second to function. Beauty can be second to function, but both can exist in a truly well refined knife. And that's the Caligo with, from TJ Schwartz. It's got a, a locking liner. It also has um, the plain edge blade. I also want to mention it does have IKBS ball bearing pivot system. I noticed that quickly. Which, yeah. as we know, can deploy the blade very smooth and very fast. And perfect lockup, too. Yep. Uh, for the price, I actually love this a lot, man. The MSRP is 49 bucks, which means you're going to actually find it in the market for anywhere from 30 to maybe even down to 29, around 30 bucks probably. Um, it's a flipper opening, and the name uh, Caligo actually means a Latin word for darkness or fog, fog rolling in or in the dark. Mm -hmm. So um, TJ liked that sort of modified drop point blade style. It's actually a cool knife. Um, one of the things that I liked about it was that it just has a really Really nice blue aluminum, uh, anodized aluminum splash in the pivot. Yeah. It's not overdone, just yeah. a little accent and uh, really complements the overall design of the knife very well. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I like it. I think it's going to sell really well, man. Yeah, this is a great everyday carry uh, pocket knife. One position um, clip on one it. One position clip. Yeah. Um, and it's a low profile clip, and there's actually a lanyard hole in the back end of the knife here where mm -hmm. you can uh, actually string this knife onto a lanyard if you uh, want to carry it um, with some paracord or, or a strap. Yeah. Great aesthetics to it. Uh, good price for what it is. Um, I think it's a winner. Uh, we could talk about this one all day long because I, I want one and I want to carry it around and cut, cut stuff with it. But uh, let's set it aside because there's a lot more to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also wanted to show you guys that um, the original field strip technology, which I know you've seen, and that's from um, Ken Onion. It was released in 2017. And what you've got is the original home front here. Here. And uh, we all know how that works, although it's always important to show it. Really, the, it's a very simple process. You just flip the latch here, which disengages the pivot. You roll this, which releases the handles, and your knife comes apart in three easy pieces here. And the reason why that's a good thing is because you can actually clean and maintain your knife. So if you have lint or dirt or grease or mud or anything inside of your knife, it can uh, cause it not to work properly. So what you want to do to put it back together, uh, once you've cleaned it is you want to make sure this pivot seats correctly. This here is the mechanism inside this pivot. And so you place it there and you want to bring the handles back together first. So you roll this uh, rear release wheel counterclockwise and you'll see, you'll see the handles actually tighten. Then you move this lever back down and that seats the pivot mm -hmm. and then you're back in full working order. Yep. Uh, the story of this year and the reason why I'm showing you this original home front knife is that there's other designers have picked up the actual uh, field strip technology and taking it to their designs uh, this year. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, man. I'm going to show you a couple of, actually four in a row of really cool knives. We'll start with these first three. Let me set these two aside. This this is the actual Gokin knife from James Williams. Now this is a G10 handle. Um, it's a, 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 I want to say this correctly. It's an Ozaraku Zakuri blade style mm -hmm. from the ancient warlord, inspired by the ancient warlord Takeda Shinjin. And I want you guys to Google that because you'll get a chance to read all about it. And it's 1.4116 stainless steel. It's $150 um, manufactured okay. suggested retail price, which means you'll find it out in the market for probably 70 or 80 bucks. Okay. Um, and it also has, if you see, it comes with a locking liner. 
It also has field strip technology, so you've got the lever there and the rear release wheel here. All works the same way? All works the same way. It's a pretty thin knife, actually. It's going to ride low profile in your vest or in your in your kit or yeah. also in your jacket. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a actually two-position pocket clip, uh, the CRKT here, and then on the other side, you've got the space there to That's put cool. the pocket clip. That's cool. Um, this is a very distinctive-looking knife, and James Williams always brings it. James Williams has been a martial arts trainer for over uh, 50 years, honestly, and um, he served in the U.S. Army, and uh, he's just an incredible talent. He has his own um, system of strategy, is what he calls, and trains folks in uh, military and uh, security applications. So James is a, is a good tactical expert, a great tactical expert, and I'm looking forward to showing everyone this knife this year. Mm, nice. Cool. Uh, the Voss is also 1.4116 steel, and it's actually, um, I want to say that it just is a clean, smooth line. It's $89.99 is the MSRP. It's got a satin finish. Uh, Jesper Voxnes is from Denmark, and you can actually see sort of the Danish modern influences in his design because it's very clean and simple. There's no, uh, nothing nothing extra really. Very minimalist approach. Um, Jesper Voxnes is an excellent designer and, and uh, designs for Vox knives. And uh, this is his new knife, the Vaz. It's designed to be an outdoor, everyday carry blade. You can take it out in the field. It also has um, field strip technology. Yep. So what's the um, sort of point of difference here is that other designers are now embracing this award-winning platform uh, to make their knives on as well. And uh, of course, Ken Onions is ecstatic about that. And we're uh, pleased to bring this sort of innovation to the marketplace in a variety of ways. Now, one of the things I'll note so far is that uh, the knives we're seeing that include that um, field strip technology are roughly around the same size. They're not they're yeah. not little knives per se. They're not gigantic. Good I'm not point. trying to make that, you know, trying to complain in, in any way, but uh, they're not little little knives. I wonder if you'll be able to shrink that technology at some point for some real small ones. That's a great question, um, Shane, and I want you to be aware that um, this is 1.0. Yeah. This is really still the first version of field strip technology. Yeah. You can only imagine that we might be hard at work on the next iteration of it, <laughs> um, but that's going to have to stay tuned to hear, to gotcha, hear about that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I appreciate so, that, man. Those cool. are some cool field strip knives. I got one more to show you in the field strip collection this year. This is the Rakiri knife. I'll actually set it down for the camera and see, should I tip it a little? That's good. Um, this is the Rakiri by Duhara, who's the son of master cutlery and knife smith, uh, Japanese Kojihara. Uh, they run the House of Hara in Japan, and Kojihara is a master cutlery, uh, cutlery and bladesmith, and his son now, Duhara, is designing knives, and this is his first uh, knife for CRKT. Uh, it's got the field strip technology where you see actually the lever here and the rear release wheel back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, this knife really looks like sort of science fiction. Yeah. It's crazy, sort of a Battlestar Galactica or like a Star Trek um, borderline Klingon. Or it's yeah. just really cool yeah. and distinctive looking. Uh, but you should be aware, and I want to make your viewers aware too, that this is actually based on the Lado sword design from Japan. Okay. Traditional sword. Um, just Google image search L-A-I-D-O. Okay. And you'll see sort of the influence of what, where this actual influence, um, Japanese influence came into this uh, sort of carrying a sword actually into your pocket. Oh, cool. So for fun, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, excellent everyday carry blade. You've got a one position pocket clip here. It's sort of science fictioned up just like the rest of the knife. Mm -hmm. um, a very distinctive and cool looking knife. And that's the Rakiri. The cool. Rakiri is $99.99, so $100 okay. Bucks okay. for MSRP. You'll All see right. it out in the market. Uh, for a bit less than that once it hits the dealer base. Good, good, good. Uh, we've taken that field strip now into not just from CRKT, but CRKT, which produces Ruger knives, has one there as well. Yeah, that's right, Shane. I know you were looking at this earlier. This is called the RTD, which is the Ruger takedown. And uh, this is also 1.4116. It's a German stainless steel. It's a very good, solid, everyday steel that can stack up against a 440. Um, this is a lever here that actually releases the pivot section. This is the rear release wheel again, where you can see the handles will come apart. Mm -hmm. This is also based on field strip technology. Now, this knife is designed by Matthew Lurch. He's out of Sussex, Wisconsin, and he's been designing knives for over 20 years. He's an excellent designer. We have many Matthew Lurch knives in the line. Yep, I like the. Um, I like 
like his designs a lot, actually. Yeah, his wife, MJ Lurch, also designs knives, but this is a Ruger takedown. The reason why it's called Ruger takedown is because you can actually uh, field, strip it. field strip the knife, yeah. yeah. And a Matthew Lurch design... And also, um, takedown is kind of a term for taking your gun apart. So. Exactly, yeah. And I love the fact that there's always using uh, sort of gun terms and yes. gun ideas yeah, uh, <laughs> related one, to all the Ruger knives. One fun thing about the Ruger knives is that they're all based on that, so you'll sell like muzzle brake or yeah. two shot or yeah. all cylinders, you know. I think it's cool. A lot of cool um, themes and um, uh, product names that are actually yeah. aligned with the Ruger brand very well. True, yeah. Cool. I like it. Uh, still focusing on Ruger a little bit here. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of um, knives here. This is um, the Ken Onion Windage. And, Let me get that in hand while you're checking the specs. This has got that pocket clip on it. I think I can't remember what you introduced it on, but it's the one that kind of springs out. Yeah, Feels it was like it's from part the of the swindle, handle. I think was it, it was on. Yeah, that's previously. right. Yep, yep, yep. I remember that. That uh, you can just kind of push this out and then fit it into pocket sort of backwards. Mm -hmm. I was trying it out a second ago. It works really well. Yeah, um, it's kind of a cool, cool pocket clip. It's also sort of a little innovative pocket clip. There's not any other pocket clips like it. Really, Ken's been the only one I think to do the um, spring activate. Or that that type of that type of pocket clip. Yeah, that's right. Because it was the swindle was his knife as well. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Now, now it sort of has a gunmetal gray handle. Um, it's ACR 14 MOB, which is a good solid everyday steel. Um, it's 79.99. Uh, MSRP. MSRP. Yep. It's got a stonewash finish on the blade. Uh, see if the camera can pick that up. I, it's really yeah, I'm it's very it. attractive. Yeah, I agree. Comes in these the VEF serrations and then standard plane. Yeah. Also. A plain edge. Okay. Now we've been working very closely with Ruger for the last two years to bring this Ruger knife line to market. The reason why Ruger approached us is they felt like the brands aligned well and they said that they liked the fact that we worked with designers. We worked with actual people here. Yeah. You know, it's not some engineering team any, anywhere else. We just work with designers directly to bring their innovative designs to market uh, for an affordable price. Yeah. I'm checking out the pivot there. It looks like the, <laughs> the head of a bullet. It's super cool. Cool, man. Or the yeah, tail you, of it. When you look you at say. some of the Ruger line real closely, you, all, you you will pick up on little gun gun elements into the design. Yeah, it's really and, cool. And kind of the the 1911-ish checkering or whatever on the on the um, on the grip there. That's really on the cool. handle scales. Yeah, yep. handle scale. Sweet, but it's still got Ken's trademark lines to it for sure. Looks like a Ken onion. I'm digging it, man. Uh, larger, larger. A look at it in yep. hand. So it fills my entire hand. So this is not a little uh, EDC. And uh, uh, the weight on it, I don't know if you have it, but I'm going to put that at probably plus four, maybe even plus five. I got 5.3 ounces on that. Okay. Yep. Just over five. IKBS, beautiful. Yeah, and those vepserations, they just burn through rope and fibrous material. They really do cut better. Yeah, agreed. Um, this is the LCK, which is also a Matthew Lurch design. Um, it's $39.99. It's in the Ruger line. It's a 8CR 13 MOV, like I said, which is a great everyday steel. Mm -hmm. um, it's also got some really straight lines like Matthew. Uh, most of Matthew knives are very distinctive. You can tell that it's a Matthew Lurch design. Yeah. Um, but it also has sort of the, the gun handle sort of accoutrements as well. Um, this knife is actually in the Ruger line and uh, is another really fine example of the type of knives that we can bring um, into the Ruger world yeah. and uh, in a collaboration with CRKT Design. These handle scales, are they aluminum? They're not, are they? Um, I feel I like these are polymer. No, they're glass reinforced yeah, nylon. That makes sense. That, and that feels like it Which too. provides really excellent grip. You know, if, if your hand gets wet or something. or And drops some, the cost a lot too. It that's, does. That's why the cost you, you, yep. you, you mentioned is... is but it almost looks like thing. a gun gun grips too, you know, yep. in a way. So. Or yeah, like forward serrations on your, mm -hmm. on your slide. I like it. Nice low pocket clip there. Um, is that IP, IKBS or not? Um, I don't know if the LCK, let me take a look here in my notes real quick. I'm going to say no, um, it doesn't feel like it. No no IKBS, yeah. but it does have a glass reinforced nylon, a locking liner, and a flipper with easy opening. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
works well and and for the cost yep I think I'm, I'm totally down with it yeah I mean your, your manufacturer suggested retail price on this knife is thirty nine ninety nine you're gonna see it out in the marketplace for 20 25 bucks yeah a real easy one to get into also light also thin real easy to make into a, a daily carry that'll work hard for you cool um, in addition to knives we got a couple of choppers I wanted to tell, tell the guys about so yeah, go ahead I want to show you guys uh, we got two here and these are both designed by Elmer Rausch and um, you've got the big uh, frayer axe and then you have a smaller Rausch pack axe and they're both excellent outdoor utility tools um, you can see that they do vary in design although they also have the same feeling of sort of the traditional axe and uh, Norse influences uh, I'll start with the Roush pack axe and um, this is a great awesome uh, outdoor tool it's 1060 carbon steel it's got a hammer finish on it mm -hmm. and the CRKT is actually sort of burned into uh, the handle and I wanted to bring this to your attention because I know that there may be a lot of uh, Boy Scouts out there watching your channel mm -hmm. Shane and uh, when I was Couple. young I had a wood burning kit yeah and I don't know if you have, have had one of those in your life I probably did you know? I, I want to get another one actually. but it's Go cool ahead. to see the CRKT logo actually burned into the handle like that yeah that's uh, a nice touch yeah, I agree. Um, I love the size of this thing too, man. It's, it's a perfect size. It's terrific. And, and uh, the sweep of that blade, that's yeah, going to be real aggressive, get some good hard work done. Uh, yeah. We're cool. making an aftermarket sheath for these that will be available as well. And okay. I did want to say this is a Tennessee Hickory contoured handle that is going to be very comfortable and it's going to give you that confidence in hand that you're looking for out in the, yeah. out in the outdoors. Yeah, so nice big flare on the end of that, like you said, to give you the confidence as you're swinging it, to keep it locked into your hand. Um, I like that. Good. Okay, let's take a look at the Frere. Now, this is just a... It, the Frere you know, tuck. So oh, wait, no, that's the something The camera else. almost doesn't do it justice because I wish that, the, that you, the guys that are watching this, man, when you get your hands on this, it's just a gorgeous big piece of Viking awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> um, the name means Norse god of, like, kingship or virility, and you can see why. This is the Frere. It's got an axe with a very deep beard. And uh, I was talking to um, one of the designers here in the booth uh, yesterday, and he said that actually if you took this the reason why that this beard would be uh, used or one of the reasons for the beard outside of choking up and doing detail work is that in the ancient days you could actually um, hook the shield and pull the shield off of a guy in battle and that would give you access to sort of take him out oh interesting so that's one um, use for a beard design dual um, purpose yeah dual purpose you can also choke up on it and you know you can make tinder or do some detail work with this you uh, know what though that I could see that in a just kind of a wilderness um, functionality, kind of something to pull branches down to get access to things that Absolutely. you may not, may not easily get reached to. Uh, think something that's up there that you need to pull down, or some wood that you want to work with, or something like that. I could see that that would be you know useful in that way. So mm -hmm. yeah, this modern a, applications. Yeah, this is a black magnesium phosphate coating, and what it helps with is, is uh, corrosion resistance. And then this is also a Tennessee hickory handle, and this this color is sort of a burnt red or almost uh, almost like a wine color it's got some patina on it it looks like it's gone through some use um, I'll just sort of flare it around here so you can see the whole thing it looks really cool and I wish that um, or I hope the camera is able to pick up sort of the detail on how cool the handle is yeah because the color here is just incredible it's well done well done got a little a little bit of head sticking out right here uh, mm -hmm. that varies from the pack axe and that that one's completely flush there so that's something to note for those of you looking for those details um, good looking stuff overall though the knives are sweet the choppers are sweet the Ruger stuff is awesome you know it's cool to see the the line expand on the field strip stuff yeah and uh, I know you can't talk about future things but <laughs> I predict there's gonna be smaller versions of it yeah you, don't, you can either confirm nor deny it's fine well make sure you click and subscribe to the late Boy Scouts channel and check us out on CRKT.com and uh, Shane once again you know I've been with you for a few years now walking through the new products and having a great time here at SHOT Show this is 2018 and thank you for coming by and uh, taking a review of the new products and stopping by the booth Joel thank you we are at CRKT SHOT Show 2018. See you guys soon. Hey, I'm Zach with Blade HQ, and this is my Razor Sharp H&K Mini Axis. And my favorite thing to cut with it is warm butter.